Welcome back. Uh, recently, Prime Minister Mustafa Mbouli confirmed that Egypt possesses a huge and promising potentials in the field of producing a renewable energy and competitive uh, at competitive prices. And to shed more light on this issue, we're very delighted to be joined with uh, Dr. Megid Karamuddin, as an executive director of renewable energy. Good morning, uh, Dr. Karamuddin. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Everything is okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, could you please shed more light on the potentials Egypt enjoy in renewable energy production? Well, uh, Egypt is among the uh, most advanced countries in renewable energy in the region. Mm. Egypt uh, has, uh, in fact, uh, uh, is ranked now the top on, uh, on the Arab region uh, <laughs> in terms of installation of uh, uh, renewable energy. Uh, hydro, solar, and wind uh, bulb lamps. And uh, Egypt is also among the uh, future hubs of green hydrogen that would, uh, is now attracting a lot of investment and uh, looked at as a way to, uh, in fact, decarbonize the different sectors uh, in, uh, in the industrial piece. Right. How important is it to expand uh, the execution of electricity production uh, from the renewable energy and green hydrogen resources? <coughs> well, uh, in fact, the, uh, the importance is uh, no, now uh, more than ever is, uh, is clear to everyone. The importance is, first of all, to diversify your portfolio. So we are not relying on a single resource. Uh, and here we mean that you, we uh, somehow uh, make our reliance on, for example, uh, uh, natural gas or uh, conventional fuels in general, or reliance on hydro, uh, will not be the, uh, the, the main source of electricity and energy in the, in, in the country. And this means that if you are facing a challenge with any of these resources, we, we will, will be able to, in fact, untap other resources and ensure uh, the continuity of services and the continuity of supply. This is what, number one. So diversification of uh, the energy mix of the portfolio. Uh, the second is, in fact, uh, facing the challenges of uh, the, uh, the, the global warming. And we have seen uh, this year that we are reaching, uh, in, in July, in fact, it was recorded the highest in temperature over the past, uh, I would say, in, uh, thousands of years. Uh, at least since we started measuring the records uh, over the past uh, 100 years. So uh, 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 fighting the climate change and, uh, in fact, uh, trying as much as we can to uh, make the effort to reduce our reliance on uh, the, the, the conventional fuels, which are the main source of uh, greenhouse gases that, that uh, increase the temperature of the Earth, is one of the, uh, the, the, the most important drivers. So improving our carbon footprint, and I mean by our carbon footprint, uh, lowering the emissions for each and every uh, sector in Egypt. And uh, moving towards renewable energy uh, would help in achieving this. And this can be demonstrated in several areas. For example, if we move into a uh, solar irrigation system for the agricultural sector, this means that we are reducing the carbon footprint of the uh, agricultural sector. If we are using renewable energy, a photovoltaic, for example, rooftop systems for providing electricity to the factory and solar thermal a collector to provide hot water also to the industry. Uh, this means that we are reducing the carbon footprint of the industry while also uh, improving its competitiveness by reducing the energy component in this uh, industry. And so on. So in this in the, in the tourism sector, for example, we can uh, use uh, uh, solar electricity for uh, powering the services in the hotels and resorts. And this means that we become greener and this is an added value that several now of the tourists are looking for, that, that the, green, uh, the green tourism, we call this. Uh, so by doing this, we are also reducing the carbon footprint, but and together with that, we are putting uh, uh, a new added value to the economy. Uh, the, third, the third thing is creating job opportunities and uh, enhancing the local manufacturing capability. And by, uh, in fact, moving toward renewable energy, we. Uh, in fact, uh, Egypt is focusing, uh, based on our assessment here on that, uh, Egypt is more focusing on, on large-scale projects. And large-scale projects mean that you uh, would work with uh, 
foreign direct investments and the international financial institutions, together with, of course, local and regional uh, investors. And my, by, by adapting uh, uh, larger scale uh, uh, renewable energy projects, this would mean that uh, we will have, uh, in fact, I would say, uh, mobilization of financial resources uh, toward our economy. And this would also mean creating job opportunities uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, to the communities that where the project would be installed. And if we remember the BAM project, we remember that the, the numbers, the actual numbers of, uh, of, of our uh, citizens contributing to the installation and, uh, of the project itself, it was uh, around uh, 1,400 uh, megawatts. Uh, uh, the, there were 10,000 Egyptian uh, citizens, I mean workers uh, in terms of the technicians, the engineers, the service providers, in terms of transportation, uh, and so on. 10,000 Egyptian citizens uh, were uh, contributing to the installation and establishment of this uh, project. So if we look into the Egyptian targets for the coming 15 years, we can see that uh, there will be several projects like the Dam project uh, for wind and solar technology. And this means that we will be continuing creating job opportunities for our uh, citizens. Uh, these are some of the drivers uh, that uh, would make the transition toward renewable energy a must for Egypt. I hope I, I have answered your question. Of course, but how important is it to expand the, the execution of electricity production of renewable energy and green uh, hydrogen resources? In fact, for electricity production in particular, uh, uh, the, 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 the issue here is, uh, in fact, making sure that the electricity provided is uh, continuous and at a good quality and is, in fact, uh, reaching each and every step. And we have seen that because of shortage of fuel uh, due to several reasons, for example, the high temperature, the different economic priorities, we were running short of, uh, of uh, getting enough natural gas to power the conventional of our station. If we moved into renewable energy at a higher scale, this would mean that each kilowatt hour produced by renewable technologies like solar and wind would replace the uh, kilowatt hour reduced from conventional. And this would mean that we are reducing the need for uh, conventional fuels like natural gas and, uh, and I'm sorry, and uh, and, and so on. And uh, this, uh, in fact, is of vital importance. And each uh, kilowatt hour uh, produced by renewable energy and also saved through energy efficiency measures would help the country to in fact, use the natural gas in other more productive uses, for example, in the petrochemical industry or fertilizers industry. And we know that Egypt is ranking, ranked among the top uh, producers, for example, on the fertilizers industry worldwide. So it is better economic opportunity if we use the natural gas for this, and uh, it is more rewarding to Egypt. Uh, so what I'm saying here that uh, if we focus more and more in accelerating the program for renewable energy, this would mean that we lower the risk of uh, the, 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 the increased reliance on conventional. And this is why I'm saying this is a risk, risk because of the availability of fuel and the variety uh, attributed to the use of these fuels. Right. How would that affect the participation of the private sector as well as leading international firms in the field? Okay, private sector, in fact, uh, is seen worldwide as uh, the, uh, the, the, in fact, the, 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 I would say, uh, the, the project will not be established with, 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 uh, with only public sector uh, finance. In fact, public sector finance worldwide, worldwide is running short of uh, uh, financing the installation, the, 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 the the, the project construction, and also on uh, running short of uh, global operation and maintenance of project. And now it is the trend worldwide, uh, and it is not just a, a trend based on economics and based on efficiency, that uh, we rely on private sector finance to install, uh, construct, I mean, and uh, operate and maintain 
the electricity projects in general, not only renewable electricity, not only renewable energy projects. And by moving toward uh, private sector, this uh, would uh, mean that we will not have, the, I mean, the state budget will not be bearing the high initial cost associated with the renewable energy. But it will be, uh, in fact, based on the project economy and financial uh, methods. And uh, it will be financed through banking system, international banking system, whether through uh, soft loans uh, given to uh, green projects or uh, through for, for climate causes or commercial loans given to the companies established uh, for the project themselves. We call this special purpose vehicle companies. So the, 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 the state will not be at the cost initially, but, but rather the cost will be distributed over the lifetime by purchasing the kilowatt hour produced from the electricity. And this means that the, what will be paid for is the price of electricity over uh, 20 or 25 years of operation. And this is uh, a good thing that, uh, in fact, better for uh, the, uh, I would say, economic resilience of the, of the country to rely on private sector. But on the other hand, this would require uh, several uh, things. This would require the, uh, legislation, for example, laws and regulations that would, uh, would help, uh, in fact, the private sector to operate in the market. And this would need also incentives in terms of uh, uh, land allocation, in terms of electricity infrastructure, transmission lines, uh, roads, and so on. And without being prepared to do things, it would be, uh, in fact, rather difficult to have good prices for electricity. And this is a good thing because now we are seeing that Egypt is moving into this direction. Several measures have been taken since 2015. Uh, laws and regulations are, uh, have been adopted and being improved all the time. Uh, land is being allocated, 35,000 square kilometers are allocated right now in Egypt for projects. Uh, transformation lines are being ex extended to the location anticipated for these projects and so on. There are, these are some measures that are being taken. Uh, nevertheless, these all are, uh, are projects relying on large-scale investments with heavy investors. Uh, they, have, they can afford to, to, to work on that. But they would require also stability on the foreign exchange market. They would require also stability in the uh, incentives mechanism. They would require also uh, some sort of guarantees that they will receive the money from the utility. Uh, and they would require also what we call bankable documents, bankable documents in terms of contracts, in terms of uh, agreements with the of takers, which are uh, typically uh, the utilities uh, in the country. Uh, uh, this is, in, a, in brief, is, uh, is what is related to private sector in the renewable energy field. Uh, right. So, uh, and what about the role of international financing bodies in empowering the private firm and uh, its bodies? Okay, uh, there are two levels in this. Uh, the first level we spoke about is providing uh, soft finance, I mean with low interest rate, to, uh, uh, to all projects in the field of what we call green energy transition, like renewable energy or energy efficiency or improving the, the efficiency also of conventional systems. This is one side, so providing low interest uh, finance. Uh, the second is, in fact, uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, small scale and decentralized systems, which in fact we are somehow lagging behind. Uh, in Egypt, we are not yet uh, empowering citizens to install systems uh, for their own. I mean, rooftop system of residential uh, houses or uh, in the industrial domain or uh, a national program for the agri-food industry. And in this, the, in this regard, it is important to establish what we call energy transition funds or renewable energy and energy efficiency funds and this fund is uh, some sort of uh, uh, i would say a facility that is being established by the state and including several uh, financing institutions including international financing institutions and local banks that acts together to create a pool for finance that will uh, lower the risks for both the industry and also the citizens, the consumers, to install uh, solar uh, energy systems and the energy efficiency systems as well. 
and by putting this together uh, and ensuring that people can reach this high quality systems uh, whether in renewable energy or energy efficiency at a good price uh, uh, this would help uh, to scale up the market more uh, uh, unfortunately we do not have such facility for a small scale yet but it is really important and this why it is important because we know that the uh, the, 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 the systems right now for example a rooftop system each one kilowatt would require around from 20 to 30,000 Egyptian pounds, which in fact is a burden to almost 95% uh, of the Egyptian population. And this means that if I'm thinking of installing a solar system, which is 5 kilowatts, I would require something between 100,000 to 150,000 Egyptian pounds. And in other countries that have, in the region, I mean, similar to us, that have got this touch. Uh, high prices, they said that we will allow the citizens to buy this system through installments without paying a high advance payment, without paying a big portion. So they are paying just from the savings in the electricity price, from the, uh, from the electricity bill, and they are getting this into loans from seven, even to ten years, or at least five years. So what I'm saying that without such facility, similar to, similar to the facility that Egypt created, for example, for uh, the taxes replacement two years ago, it would be difficult for citizens to have, uh, in fact, a wide scale program. The other part is related to flexibility of the distribution companies to allow citizens to install a solar system. And this is a critical issue. And in fact, some uh, distribution companies in Asia are covering different regions. Some of them are very much welcoming the uh, installation of solar systems, while others are somehow reluctant because of uh, the, the fear that they would lose some of their uh, high-consuming uh, customers, high-energy-consuming customers. And, 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 and here uh, uh, it is important to make sure that we are compensating these uh, distribution companies in terms of providing them additional finance to be able uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to integrate renewable energy without affecting the prices for the citizens or for the companies and without putting extra pressure especially on a small-scale application. Right. Could you please shed more light on the Ain Sokhna Green Hydrogen Project and its uh, economic importance in addition to uh, the outcome of this importance on the uh, ex executing the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, some projects in the field of renewable energy and green hydrogen in that domain? Okay. Uh, as we spoke in a different uh, episode, but, uh, Green hydrogen means the hydrogen produced by large-scale installations of, from renewable energy. Uh, not necessarily, of course, large-scale, but what, what we speak about here in Anistokna is th that we are producing the hydrogen through what is called the electrolyzers that split water into hydrogen and uh, oxygen, and these electrolyzers are, are powered by renewable electricity. And here... Uh, through resorting to green hydrogen, this means that the hydrogen itself uh, is relying on electricity, uh, and the electricity, uh, and this is different from the gray, for example, hydrogen or blue hydrogen that is produced from uh, conventional films. We are relying on electricity uh, that would require installation of projects, solar and wind projects. And Tsukhna projects are projects are, are relying on uh, wind and solar technologies, and this project, there are several, there are now more than 23 agreements signed with the Egyptian government uh, for installation and, and for uh, future projects in green hydrogen. And uh, 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 these installations uh, are, in fact, uh, aspiring to uh, use hydrogen for uh, internal, uh, uh, for, for internal industrial applications and also for exporting. Uh, uh, either uh, liquefied hydrogen or uh, exporting uh, products coming like green ammonia from this hydrogen. And also there is an aspiration in Egypt to move uh, towards creating what we call uh, e-fuels, meaning that we produce uh, fuels uh, that are used, for example, for the shipping industry and for uh, uh, the, the, the airplanes, for example, and uh, 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 and these fuels are not the conventional fuels, but although they are very much similar in their characteristics, but are, they are fuels that are produced by also uh, hydrogen 
together with uh, uh, CO2 and other, uh, uh, I would say, uh, 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 other uh, components, other uh, compounds. Uh, together with this, uh, we will produce fuels that are green, uh, lower in their carbon footprint because they are coming from green hydrogen, and they can be used directly into existing systems. So, our, so with that, we are creating opportunities for our uh, industry to, uh, to be green. We are creating opportunities also for uh, further enhancing our, ex our exports. And by enhancing our exports, this would mean that we are creating more value to, uh, to our economy and uh, putting foreign currency into the Egyptian uh, economy. Right. How do you think those projects will help creating job opportunities and boost uh, the economy and attract foreign investment and all that? Well, uh, as I said, almost all the projects are uh, led by private sector. And uh, this project would require establishing not only one company, but they would require also uh, contracts for... Uh, uh, for, for construction services, uh, contracts for supply of equipment, uh, contracts for operation and maintenance, over the entire value chain, uh, contracts for planning for the project, and uh, also they would, this would mean that you will have uh, uh, laborers that are working, I mean working forces that are working on the, uh, in the in industrial uh, facilities that are uh, created through this green hydrogen facility. Uh, so a lot of job opportunities will be created through the entire value chain. Uh, this is one, one side of the equation. Uh, another part is enhancing the local value, I mean the local content aspect. And uh, we are seeing now that uh, many of the investors are looking, for example, in uh, increasing the local content so that they are, uh, for example, sourcing the construction of the foundations, uh, the construction of the, uh, uh, the, the supply of uh, 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 cables, transformers, and many other components from the local market. And this means that you, uh, you are, in fact, creating opportunities for our local industry to grow. And also adding to that, uh, projects are typically uh, through partnerships, and partnerships also with local contractors. And our local contractors, uh, being partnered with international firms with experience in constructing such a project, would acquire the knowledge so that at a certain point they will be able to construct on their own these facilities and service not only the growth in the Egyptian market, but service also the growth in the uh, African domain, which is, uh, in fact, now target for several, uh, uh, I would say, investors worldwide to uh, provide uh, electricity service and also production of green hydrogen in Africa. Uh, so what I'm saying, there are plenty of opportunities offered through uh, this green hydrogen transition. Right. Uh, on that note, uh, Dr. Megid Karamedin, Executive Director of Renewable Energy, would like to thank you, sir, so much talking to The Breakfast Show. And you have a good day. And now it's the National Initiative for Green Smart Projects uh, is a flagship initiative directed towards attaining sustainable and smart development and addressing environmental develop uh, dimensions as well as the effects of climate change. And we have more details in the coming report.